Hello, my name is Logan Weaver. I'm an engineering student here at Bridgewater and a CAD technician at MCD, an electrical contracting company. And I want to talk about energy because energy makes the world go round. It allows us to build, to learn, to travel, and to even watch informative vlogs, if you can believe it. But energy consumption was not always like it is today. We didn't have these giant power plants or hydroelectrical dams to provide electricity to large areas at a time. So how did we get here? And more importantly, what does this mean for the future of careers in energy? I'm going to be exploring exactly that in this presentation. So let's start at the very beginning. It's estimated that one to two million years ago, humans were first able to domesticate fire. And for the longest time, this was the only real source of heat, energy, and power available. But this all began to change in the latter half of the 1700s. Michigan State University's College of Engineering reports that the Industrial Revolution was only made possible due to the innovations and advancements of the steam engine by James Watt. James Watt's steam engine was revolutionary. With only a bit of coal, it was able to outperform dozens of workhorses. It was cheap, it was convenient, reliable, and it became widespread. Now the next major breakthrough happened roughly 50 years later in the form of Michael Faraday's first electric generator. Faraday used copper wire and magnets to convert mechanical energy into electricity for the very first time. This was revolutionary and opened the door for industry to advance at a rate never seen before. His principles and his generator are still used to create almost all power today, according to ageofrevolution.org. The decades that followed saw the fastest growth of industry and advancements in human history. Power plants opened up across the nation and supplied power to large areas of America for the very first time. Power plants such as Henry Ford's cars popped up and cars were made accessible to the average person for the first time. In under a hundred years, we went from a match being invented to the average person driving automobiles. And with this, energy consumption took off. This graph shows the drastic and exponential increase in energy consumption in the United States in the 20th century. It became so widespread and so quickly that every 10 years, energy consumption doubled in the United States. So in 1920, 35% of households had electricity, but by the end of the decade, in 1929, that number skyrocketed to 68% of households. That, that number jumps even more, up to 85%, if you remove farmers from the equation. Power lines later expanded into the countryside, so then those in rural areas could experience electricity and power the same way that the city people do. That is an absolutely massive increase in energy consumption in only a decade. For all that information and more, check out ucsusa.org, the Union of Concerned Scientists website for more information about the history of energy consumption in America in the 20th century. In terms of resources used to create energy, there are many different factors and many different variables at play. Um, coal has always been consistent, reliable, and cheap since the introduction in the mid-1800s. Petroleum skyrocketed after it was introduced and after automobiles marched onto the market. Today, petroleum and oil is at the top of the list, obviously, as cars and vehicles are widespread across America. There have been other ones, such as natural gas, which also saw an increase in the last century, and also interesting ones, such as nuclear energy, which really only occurred and really was only emerging post-World War II with the discovery of nuclear energy, really. So that remains to be unseen. It could skyrocket in coming years or it could level out. It's That's still probably the newest energy source that we are using today. Um, in terms of renewable resources, they, are, they remain at the bottom of the list. They're more expensive than fossil fuels. Um, they're not as easily accessible. So they're, they're not as used in industry. So what does this mean for the future of energy? Well, there's no reason to believe that it'll drop off anytime soon. Industry will continue to advance, expand, and progress, 
while the population will also increase. This means that energy consumption will continue to skyrocket as it has and always will. In terms of careers, it's a pretty good bet that careers in energy are going to continue to be highly sought after in high demand and highly competitive for a long time to come. All this information of the resources and the projections for the future can be found in more detail at eia.gov. Here at the end of the video, it's important to note that we are still in this era. It's not something that has already happened and finished. We're still in the age of technology, of innovation, of progress. 200 years is nothing in the history of our species. So uh, that brings me to the conclusion that we're not near the end of this era, or even the middle, but we are still at the beginning. So if the last 100, 200 years of rapid growth of industry was impressive, get ready for the next 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 years of industry and see what that might bring. Thank you.